of cost and price. Cost means the direct cost contributes to the element of work, including direct overheads, like the supervision. As for the price, we may have the following equation. For the price, it is the cost, okay, direct and indirect, plus the profit. We call it price. Or the price, sometimes the cost, risk, overheads, profit, and markup. So we have two equations for this one. It depends on the uh, accuracy or the way we are calculating the cost of the project. So we have the cost direct and indirect, or the risk <coughs> will be included, overhead will be included, the profit and markup. What do we what do we mean by the markup? Markup is the price that it is put to on the seller by the supplier himself. Okay, so some of the goods, okay, some of the goods, uh, the supplier tells you that you have to keep this price, don't exceed it. I will give it to you like, uh, for example. Uh, with 100 but you have to, to sell it with 120 no more than that okay so your markup will be 20 reals okay uh, this is the meaning of the markup so price cost risk will be will be added overheads will be added the profit okay then sometimes there is a markup which is the uh, price added by the supplier himself who himself gives you uh gives you the markup uh, gives you the, the amount of the markup itself okay so even sometimes if it goes like uh, sometimes if you are selling these things in the in other areas like uh, touristic areas uh, remote areas maybe you can exceed this price but mostly mostly the markup price is the price as we said uh, imposed by the supplier himself or the, the main seller of this one so you are selling retail he's selling you uh, in wholesale and telling you in, in per piece you will get this much percentage or uh, money of uh, as a market okay so sometimes costs are a quantity proportional okay like in materials because uh, whenever you, you increase the material that means the quantity increase of the material the cost will increase some are time related like with the equipments the longest you are using the equipments the more price you get the more cost you have and sometimes are lump sum like setting up and dismantling of tower crane for example once you set it up the tower cranes okay this yellow cranes this is called tower cranes it is a lump sum how much does it cost you? Then afterwards, for dismantling, you need also to pay that much of money. So it is used for. I, I'm talking about this. Uh, it is maybe by rent and it, it is uh, time proportional, or time related. But I'm talking about the dismantling and setting up. There are some items that must be considered in costing and estimating, like the finance charges on money borrowed or the purchase of planet, or maybe borrow some money. For the case of for the case of like you don't have like uh, financing you don't have the money uh, sufficient for the investment so you borrow this one from any kind of entities they will take uh, they will take a profit interest so that one uh, is also has to be taken into account this uh, depreciation in the value of the of a piece of planet as it ages that will be discussed further in the future in the future in the last of these. Uh, of these classes or this uh, course but the depreciation depreciation is that whenever you use like an equipment like for example the excavator like if you use it for two years for example it's not its cost will not be the same as before two years before so this is why you are losing some of, losing some of the costs while while you are using this equipment uh, in the project for two years so this is also has to be taken the depreciation cost of this uh, equipments and the overheads we talked about this one in the, in the, in the previous is any expenses incurred to support the work or business while not being directly categorized under specific uh, product or service or item of work it is assumed as indirect cost so the amount of the profit depends on the different factors هذا يعتمد على عدة عوامل يعني المشروع إلى مشروع قد يكون مشروع مربح قد يكون مشروع ربح قليل يعني 
هنتكلم على الربح هنتكلم على الخسارة الخسارة لها أسباب يعني لكن نتكلم إنه أنا كم أحط لنفسي ربح في المشروع X أو Y أو Z من المشاريع كم يعتم يعني أنا ماذا يعتم على عدة عوامل يعتمد أنا نسبة الربح مالي type of work يعني مثلا إذا أنت تريد تشتغل مشروع if you want to work in a sophisticated work or someone who uh, or some project that who like we have like some only few contractors who can do so you can put your price Okay, so the size of the project or contract. If it's a big project, sure, you have to take more more percentage. Okay, more uh, because there is more risks, more efforts, and so on and so forth. So you get more profits. Extent of uh, competition, as I told you. Uh, if you have the different competitors, so you are urged to or obliged to to reduce your price or to reduce your profit in order to get the contract. Sometimes. And the other first one we said type of work is we said that it is depends on the work if it's easy, simple, or hard uh, to to execute. Desire of the company to secure the work. It means that does that company like to do this work? If sometimes it's he's not uh, that much keen on this project, they put high prices. So whenever you see high prices, you know the price is jumping when they co this company is submitting their quotation. You see that he's not he's not interested that much interested in the project. Otherwise, he would not make that much high uh, profit. So they put high profit. They say if I can get this high profit, okay, I will go with with this project. But otherwise, I will not. Uh, otherwise, I will not do this project. So it depends on the desire of the company. All of the above can be called the state of the market. The state of the market. Uh, uh, it gives the, the the scope or the extent of uh, the profit that you want to to have. Like nowadays, we don't have that much uh, construction market, for example. So you know that in, now the prices are so much low for the projects, and we are, the people are taking the projects like just they want to survive. So this is very important to take into account that people are nowadays are just want to survive, so they want to take any project only at least. To uh, to survive, as I said, to cover their uh, like expenses, salaries, uh, rents, and all these things. Uh, the factors influence the overall cost and hence the price are. What does affect the overall cost and hence the price? Because we said the price is like all simply is a price is a cost plus uh, profit, as we said here. Okay, cost plus profit. This is the this is a this is the equation, the formula. Okay. So the location, okay, uh, affects and as I said before, the location affects the price of the or the cost of the project. As I said, that it's commuting to the project, like uh, accommodation, like uh, the. The food, catering, and all these things it is more expensive in the remote areas or desert areas than in the, in the middle of the of the city. And degree of complication, sure, like if you are making power plants or dams or something like that, it's complicated projects. It's not like making uh, villas or commercial building or uh, something like that. So the degree of complication will affect type of contract. It depends also on the type of contract. Some contracts has uh, some uh, kind of risks. Or ambiguity, so people they are putting uh, more price for these projects. Method of measurement also it affects up, uh, the cost of the project. Payment conditions, like for example, if someone tells you that I will pay you after four months or six months, and the other one tells you I will pay after one month from your bill submission, so that one, the, the second one, will be more cheap. Cheaper than the first one when the when the employer or the sponsor of the project or the client tells you that I will pay after after four uh, four months. So you have to cover yourself. Uh, you have to get the higher prices in order to cover yourself for the next bill. So you will ask for this much of uh, for increase in the cost and risk surrounding the project. Sure, risky projects. It has to have like more contingencies. Like instead of a three percent, you will make it to ten percent, and this is increase in the cost. So this is very important to take it into account. Okay, so let's go to the types of estimation. 
there are two types of estimation and three types sorry of estimation as we said before and now we're gonna discuss in, in detail about these uh, types of estimates the approximate estimates you remember maybe we have said that when we don't have that much details uh, specifications is not that much uh, clear and all, so on and so forth you will it's also called the abstract estimate or pre preliminary estimate it is uh, required for the preliminary studies of various aspects of the work of project like as we said before as i said before that uh, for example for the visibility study you can use it it is required for preliminary studies preliminary studies means like for example <coughs> sorry for example the the feasibility study, the Rasa Tijerwa, it is uh, prepared from the practical knowledge and cost of similar works. Okay, so sometimes you are saying if you have if you have done the same work before, you can take the prices from that one directly. Okay, if you are having uh, similar works, if you have did the same work, okay, or even you didn't, but you have you know about the similar works, uh, information and costs, you can do it. And follow the same uh, costs for this project and put your patient. So this is approximate estimate. The detailed estimate. The detailed estimate includes determination of the quantities and cost of everything required to complete the project. Everything because you have the specifications, you have detailed drawings, you have everything with you. You can co calculate the quantity of the material. Then accordingly, you can calculate the quantity, uh, the prices, uh, estimate the cost of each part of these materials or each topic of these topics. To perform this type of estimate, the contractor must have a complete set of contract documents. In the case, project is divided into different items of work. Quantities under each item are taken out. Then abstract of estimate cost is prepared at suitable rates. So this is the second type. So we have approximate and detailed. Conceptual cost estimates, analogous or top-down, Okay, it depends on the expert judgment. The expert said that this costs like that. Top down means like I'm starting from the top. Down to top, that means I'm starting from each element of the project. I'm calculating the quantities of the elements of the project. Then I'm going to the top, the price, the full price of the project. Top down means I'm going to say that this project costs this much. And also conceptual cost estimate is a quick method of determining the approximate cost of the project without benefit of uh, the detailed information of the uh, exact scope of work that is the limited amount of details we have like during initial evaluation of the project also in the piece of the study but this one uh, this one uh, has more uh, discrepancy or expected error it's ha it is higher here in this type uh, like for the conceptual as we said the schematic design is available construction documents development that means in the schematic design this is the first stage of design, in fact, uh, and the, as well the architects, the first stage of, uh, or the first phase of design is called the schematic design. So, like it's the 0 to 30 percent of construction documents you have also. So, construction documents you have zero, maybe you don't have construction documents, maybe you have like until to 30 percent of the construction documents you have. At that time, when you have the schematic design, the error will be like a plus minus 10 to 20 plus minus 20 percent of what you get the semi -detail, detail okay which is the uh, approximate design development there is a stage or which is called design development after the schematic design we have developed this design and we have more information about the project this time you have like uh, plus minus five to, to plus minus ten percent of error discrepancy and the detailed one which is uh, not approximate the detailed as we said estimate it is 90 to 100 percent plans and specifications available with us okay so that we can expect that the, the discrepancy or the error percentage will be like two two plus minus two to four uh, percent so these are the information about the detailed and uh, the detailed and conceptual estate uh, uh, estimates types of estimates now let's talk about the project finance how you finance your project it's very important nowadays in our projects to think about how to get the money sufficient to uh, work in this project to make it go on until we get the cash in okay so each project requires financing and this finance starts as a negative cash flow what is called the cash burn until the project breaks even to start 
get revenues after commissioning. I will show you now in the, in the graph below, commissioning that cover the operations and maintenance with some surplus. That means, يعني إحنا البروجكت لما نصرف عليه مثلا أنت مستثمر وتريد تبني مشروع مثلا معين عندك مشروع مثلا بمطعم أو غيره فالآن لازم تجيب الأموال المنا الفاينانس الكمية المناسبة للأموال اللي تستطيع فيها أن تغطي مصاريف المشروع إلى أن تصل إلى مرحلة البريك إيفن اللي هي مرحلة اللي تدخل من المشروع دخل وبالتالي بعدها تظل هذا الدخل لازم يكون حتى ينجح المحل أو المطعم في المثال لازم يكون في بعد مرحلة الكوميشنينج اللي هي استلام المشروع لازم يكون في الريفينيوز اللي هي المدخول للمشروع يكفر الاوبريشنز يعني مصاريف مثلا الشيف اللي شغال فيه الناس العمال اللي فيه الايجارات الماتيريال الرو ماتيريالز اللي تستخدمها الكهرباء والميه او الاوفر الاوفر هيدز كل هذه اند مينتننس اوكي وذ سم سيربلس وطبعا الصيانه وبعدها سم شيء اضافي هذا الاضافي يعتبر بالنسبه لك ايش؟ يعتبر بالنسبه لك الربح اللي هو تترجع منه الفلوس اللي انت صرفتها على هذا المشروع راح نشوفها بعد قليل. So the project normally passes through three major phases project appraisal مرحله التقييم للمشروع بنشوف المشروع هذا ناجح ولا لا اللي مثلا مشروع المطعم تشوف انت تريد تفتحها project appraisal راح نشوفه ونشوف المكان كذا في سيفيليتي ستدي يعني Project construction اللي هي مرحلة التنفيذ خلاص احنا قررنا ان البروجكت خلاص اوكي يعني نريد نجيب هذا المشروع سوينا مرحلة البروجكت كونستراكشن نريد تصرف فلوس للمقاول للموظفين اللي شغالين في المشروع كذا هذه ايضا تحتاج لها اموال وبروجكت اوبريشن اللي هي الاوبريشن مال المشروع قبل ان يبتدي يدخل انت تصرف عندك ايضا حتى تبدا المدخولات للمشروع هذا. The estimator is one of the active employees as we said I told you before. One of the active employees who is working from the very beginning of the project, from the very beginning of the project, and his efforts and compensations will lay at the first place. يعني أنت أول واحد من الناس الأول اللي يدخلون في المشروع وحتى مصاريفك وتكاليفك وكلها وجهودك راح تكون في البداية ومصاريفك وتكاليفك راح تكون من أول الناس اللي أنت موظفين في المشروع. So each project requires financing and investment, even if it is a construction project. يعني حتى لو كان انت مشروع تريد تبني ما انت انت مقاول اصلا انت اللي بتبني ما بتشغل المشروع بعدين. طيب انت ما تحتاج اموال حتى تبني بالمشروع طبعا. Therefore it is crucial, crucial to have the adequate finance from the beginning and not to rely on the internal payments or the advance payment. يعني لا تعتمد على الادفانس بيمنت والانترنال بيمنت. الادفانس بيمنت يمكن انت تحطها على الموبيلايزيشن يعني you can pay you might pay all the advance payment for the mobilization. Until you get the intern, first intern payment. So from where you will supply or from where you will uh, finance this project, or from where you will pay the engineers, staff, uh, laborers, equipment, materials, and so on and so forth. From where you will pay until you get the first invoice. You submit the first invoice and get your intern payment. Maybe it's after four months or five months. So this is why it's very important and crucial to have a sufficient amount of money to cover this. Okay, mobilization and to cover the other uh, construction processes and material buying and so on and so forth until you get the first interim payments. And even sometimes the interim payments, it doesn't cover the project uh, uh, in the whole uh, time. I mean, on the whole life cycle of the construction. Okay, the life cycle of the construction itself, only the construction. You cannot uh, depend on the interim payments. Sometimes it's late, sometimes it's not sufficient, sometimes you are. Your cash out is much more than the cash in at that stage. So there is some place in, or sometimes in the project you need to finance also yourself until the uh, interim payment comes. So the following figure shows that the cash flow curve of the for a project. You can see here, this is a, here, this is cash positive, negative, cash burn, this we call it, or negative cash or cash out, and this is cash in or positive cash. And these are the stages. So project appraisal, stage one, project implementation means construction or uh, execution, and the project operation. مرحلة تشغيل المشروع. طيب. إحنا ضربنا مثال على المطعم خلونا في الم في مثال المطعم. أول ما جيت سويت الدراسة جو جد وجدت رحت على مثلاً شيء أشخاص من المتخصصين في الموضوع يدرسوا لك ال يمكن بعض الناس يظن إنه يعني كيف أنا أجيب هاي نجلس مع بعض ونحسبها ونشوف واحد أبو مطعم 
ونتكلم معاه خلينا نتكلم على فندق يعني مثلا فراح تجيب شركه متخصصه في دراسات الجدوى وتقييم المشروع هذا تصرف من عندك فلوس هذا الموضوع صح لكن غريب ما هي كثير مقارنه بمرحله الامبلمنتيشن وتشوف الكيرف هذا ماشي بهالطريقه ما هو كثير ستيب سنت ستيب كيرف يعني ما حاد كثير ما في نزول قوي بعد ما بعدين تقرر انه خلاص ممكن توقف الى هنا خلاص راحت عليك الفلوس وانت سويت الدراسه وخلاص وهذا الاستثمار والاستثمار يعني في خساره وربح خساره وفي ريسك طيب لا خلاص قررنا ان نستمر في بروجكت امبلمنتيشن بدينا نبني الفندق وبدات المصاريف تزيد وشوف الكيرف بدا ايش بدا يزيد يعني بدا ينحني بشكل ستيب حاد الى ان وصل الى بروجكت اوبريشن طيب البروجكت اوبريشن بدينا نصرف ايضا على الاوبريشنز يعني الماتيريال اشترينا وكذا ومواد غذائيه للفندق عشان الفندق في مطعم وكذا وهاي الامور للتشغيل لكن بدات فتح الفندق فالناس بدات تدخل وبدا صار عندك الكاش ان الكاش ان لما بدا يدخل رجع الكيرف يصعد يعني مصاريفك مع الدخل قلنا وي هاف وي هاف انكم اند اور ريفينيوز ذا ريفينيوز هاز تو كفر ذا اوبريشنز اند هاز تو كفر ذا ذا مينتنس اند هاز تو كفر ذا وات وي هاف سيد ذا مينتنس ذا ذا مينتنس ذا اوبريشنز اند اول Operations, maintenance, and and some and it has to have some surplus. Okay, يعني مبلغ إضافي اللي هو ربح. So هذا سوينا كذرين لل operation وال maintenance مع بعض الأرباح راح يبدي إيش يصير عندنا بالكير راح يبدي يصعد لأنه راح نبدي نعوض المصاريف. يبدي يصعد إلى أن يوصل النقطة هذه النقطة تسمى the break even. This point is called the break even اللي هي المرحلة اللي يصير إنك أنت خلاص أصبحت لا لك ولا عليك. ما يقولون. That you have Brought back, or you have gained back all what you have paid before. كل هذا اللي صرفته إلى هاي النقطة بديت شوي شوي ترجع فيه إلى أن وصلت إلى مرحلة البريك إيفن يعني رجع. طبعاً هذا المرحلة المدة الزمنية هذه أيضاً مهمة بالنسبة لصاحب المشروع. يقول لك مثلاً how much time I do I need to to reach to the break even point? Do I am I able to cover all these expenses for like from one or two years? يعني المشروع ممكن ياخذ له سنه ونص بس الامبلمنتيشن، الابريزل ممكن تاخذ له شهرين ثلاثه اربعه خمسه وات ايفر. اوبريشنز انتل وي جو وي ريتش تو ذيس وان ميبي لايك فور سكس مانث ات ليست. اوكي؟ سو انتل يو جيت ذا بريك ايفن سكس مانث فور مانث ذيس از وان يير اند تو ييرز فور ذا اكسكيوشن. ذات مينز ثري ييرز ام بينج ويزاوت جيتنج اني 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 موني. اوكي؟ اني ثينج. سو ايفن 100 بيس ام نوت جيتنج فروم ذيس بروجكت. So this is why it's very important to know this time period, and you have to finance yourself, finance, find a finance source uh, for this period. Then after breaking even, you will get the revenues like here, and it's getting high and high. And here, it was going up, jumping up, in fact. Then afterwards, it became it became plateau. I mean, because it started to happen. I COVID, COVID curve. يقول لك نريد نسوي بلاتو او فلاتن ذا كيرف. سو ناو هي وي هاف جامب هير ا جامب ان ذا كيسز اوف كوفيد 19. وي هاف جامب ان ذا موني هير وي ار جيتنج ريفينيوز هاي ريفينيوز ذن افتر ووردز ات بيكمز بلاتو او فلاتن ذا كيرف. ذا كيرف ويل بيكم فلاتن. واي؟ هو نوز؟ كان يو بليز تيل مي؟ Okay, uh, if you did know, so you are very intelligent. If you didn't study this before, I think you studied this before, finance uh, course. Uh, the project will become old. Maybe here, from here, from this point to this point, like it will be, for example, five years, six years, ten years, we don't know. So the project will be old and another buildings will come. Okay, say five years, there is another hotel, maybe three new hotels after that, after five years. So people will not be, uh, they will not desire to go to your hotel, to go to the other hotels. So this is why maybe you will get uh, less uh, uh, occupancy in your, uh, in your hotel. So it will be flattened. Or sometimes even you are uh, urged to or obliged to, to lessen uh, the price 
of of the of the rooms okay to reduce the price of the of the rooms so this is why we see, we see that is uh, the curve is flattened so i prefer to have this estimating techniques uh, to get it in the next class um well, this, this is this one. I have reached the end of that chapter. Okay. So uh, we had the estimating techniques. Estimating techniques is global estimating. We have different types of estimating techniques. Okay. One of them, which is called the global estimating. Okay. This technique is relies on libraries of achieved similar projects. This is this technique also known as the rule of thumb. Rule of thumb means the khabra from experience land. Okay. يعني انت ممكن تقيم المشروع بالخبره عن طريق الخبره اسمها رول اوف ثم هذا المشروع انا اشتغلت قصادي خل مرتين وثلاث مرات فخلاص خلينا نقيمه بايش هذا اللي نشوفه احنا حاليا في وين في مشاريع الفلل السكنيه اللي احنا نشتغلها يجي على المقاول يقول لك كم يقول لك المتر بكذا متر ب 90 متر ب 15 وات ايفر على حسب نوع هذا هيكل ولا مفتاح ولا عماله فقط ولا عماله ماتيريال ف فبالتالي يقول لك ايش؟ يقول لك المتر بكذا بير سكوير ميترز تفضل او في بعض البلدان ان ويسترن كانتريز زي يوز كيوبيك ميترز راح نعرف ليش احنا بعض الاحيان قسم يستخدمون الاريا فلور اريا وقسم يستخدمون كيوبيك ميترز بلدنج فوليوم هذه راح ناخذها في المحاضره القادمه ان شاء الله. There is a difference. There is a reason behind that. And per megawatt capacity of power stations على حسب انتاجيه المحطه الكهربائيه ممكن نحسبها محطه عمر كذا ميجا وات بكذا سعر لانه في تناسب طردي اوكي ما بين حجم المحطه وانتاجيتها يعني وحجم المحطه وبالتالي مربوطه هذه يعني يقول لك انا اشتغلت كذا محطه كهرباء سابقا ام الكذا ميجا وات حصلت فيها ام الكذا ميجا وات وهي اكثر ميجا وات سعرها كان كذا فبالتالي الميجا وات تكلفتها كذا هذا سعره بير متر او كيلو متر فور رودز كوست بير طن for output of output per process planets. Factorial estimating. This is very easy. These techniques are widely used for the process planets or power stations, where the core of the project consists of major items. For example, the car, for example, the main item, 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 يكون السعر الحقيقي للمبنى هنا هنا تنحط الفلوس يعني في هذا المكان. So the main core core items or major items like uh, like towers like uh, main main power buildings like generator buildings or something like that and some two other buildings with it that can be specified easily and price prices can be obtained from a potential supplier. يعني ممكن نحصل السعر معناتها من من السبلاير نقول هذا كم يكلف التاور كم يكلف كذا كم يكلف كذا and then we can get the other prices. Other auxiliary things يعني الأشياء الثانية the other parts and are are factors of the main and major items. يعني ال 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 ما خلينا نقول إن الجنريتر بالدينك هي the main item وال والتاور. طيب الأسلاك اللي تربط بين التاور. طيب الكابلات اللي طالعة من 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 المحطة وداء و طالع من المحطه وراح تغذي مثلا المنطقه السكنيه وتغذي تغذي التاورز البايبس مال مال الكهرباء وات ايفر الراكس بايب راكس يسموها اللي تمشي فيها البايبس اللي عباره عن شبكات هياكل انشائيه حديديه تحمل هذا الموضوع ولو يمكن هياكل انشائيه هي المين بارتس او تعتبر ميجر ايتمز فبالتالي نقول اذا البايبس راح تكلفنا والانسترومنتس والالكتريكس والستراكشر اوف ستراكشر اوف فاونديشن مثلا راح يكلفنا مثلا نسبه 30% من من اسعار من سعر الميجر ايتمز كذا يعني بتحسب بهاي الطريقة 30% 40% في تقريبا البايبس او الكيبلز تكلف نسبة الى سعر المحطة فالمحطة احنا طلعنا حسبنا الميجر ايتمز فيها المين ايتمز وبالتالي هذه تعتبر 30% من المكونات المشروع <تصفيق> هذا بالنسبة للفاكتوريال استيميتنج يعني هو موضوع دقيق جدا يعني اقصد يعني موضوع انه انت تحسب الباور بلانت والتفاصيل الدقيقة هذه يعتبر سوفيستيكيتد Uh, this is considered to be a sophisticated project, so it takes uh, so much time and effort. So sometimes they go for the this type of estimate or technique factorial estimate. Uh, we have the other thing is uh, in man hours uh, estimation or estimating. The total man hours estimated for the project then multiplied by the labor market rates, then added to the cost of the materials and equipment. So you have equipments 
materials and you have laborers, uh, man hours working in, in your project, whether staff, managers, how much the hour for, for each one of them. Then this technique is suitable for labor and intensive construction projects where they were mostly all the manpower, uh, mostly all the project will be done by laborers. Especially, you know, the manpower service projects. يعني المشاريع اللي يسموها هي فقط عمل يد او خدمه هذه ممكن تحسبها بهذه الطريقه يعني ممكن اذا كان صاحب المشروع يجيب سبلاي مان باور سبلاي فهذه تنحسب بهذه الطريقه يعني. Then you add the material and the equipment and it's very important to have like this kind of estimate. Unit rate estimating the techniques is based this technique is based on the traditional BOQ approach to price construction works. اللي هو العادي اللي هي unit rates. البي او كيو تجيب البي او كيو وتشوف الكميات اللي موجوده اليونت اوف ميجرمنت سعر اليونت تضربها بالكميه تطلع التوتال كوست تحسب على هذا الاساس اللي هي السعر الكلي للمشروع هذه تراديشنال معروف عند الكل الاوبريشن اون كوست اوف ريسورس كوست استيميتنج ذي كول ات ذيس ديبيندس اون ذا توتال كوست ديرايفد فروم ذا اوبريشنز اور اكتيفيتيز ريفيلد باي ذا ميثود ستيتمنت اند فروم ذا اكيوميليتد ديماند for the resources. Labor plans and materials are costed at current rates. And in labors labors, plans and materials that we will use in the project, are costed at current rates, in the SR, the SR, so for market rates. And the total cost derived from the operations or activities revealed by the method statement. And the operation, operational cost is operational. يعني مبني على احنا في في there is difference between the project and the operation. The operational project that means that this is a continuous process. So the operations are uh, or activities revealed by the method statement. Okay, so how we are operating this project, how much it costs, and from the accumulated demand of the resources. طيب كم المجموع الكلي لل resources اللي راح راح نستخدمها في تحوي تحقيق او تشغيل هذا المشروع. This depends on the total cost derived from the operations. Our activities revealed by the method statement and from the accumulated demands of the resources. The yeah, demands of the resources, the yeah, higher resources. Labors, planets, materials, and cost of the current uh, This way we have reached to the first, uh, to the end of the first chapter. And inshallah, next uh, chapter, uh, chapter two, approximate estimate, we'll go in deep and details. Detail what are the uh, topics of that uh, of that chapter, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa